This is called Lula Kebab. When Ras Nasrisho and his wife moved to New York, like many immigrants to the city, they wanted to be close to others who spoke their native language. So you spoke Shugni, Russian, and what was the other one? But that was easier said than done. A Shugnani, a minority language from Tajikistan, is spoken in the U.S. by only about 20 families. <laughs> Fear that the language would disappear altogether led Russ to contact linguistics professor Daniel Kaufman, who has created the Endangered Language Alliance. If we, at this moment, okay, during our lifetime, lose this language, then, then I think it would be our responsibility. The Alliance works to find and preserve languages in danger of extinction. Garo, yeah. Okay. So they're speaking their own language. Much of its work is done around the New York area. Canvassing the city's diverse immigrant population, Daniel regularly uncovers rare dialects. I love it. I, I always love meeting new people and people who have never ever come across any other way. Right? And I think in New York people are actually often looking for an excuse to talk to strangers. And this is my perfect excuse to actually get to know all of the other segments of the city. Daniel searches for events around the city that bring linguistic communities together, such as an annual festival in Queens for descendants of the now extinct Gutsche enclave of Slovenia. <laughs> So how important is it to have the community in New York stay together and keep the language alive? Oh, it's very important, especially for our children, our grandchildren, to meet other, because in some way we're all related. What we're trying to do is at least keep a history book open. But since the people of Gutsche were exiled during World War II, native speakers are limited to an aging population. And despite their efforts, few among the third generation speak the language, meaning it's only a matter of time before it disappears. <laughs> the fact that the grandchildren don't speak the language, um, does it ever bother you that when your kids die, the language may be gone? Most likely. Sadly to say, but most likely that's what will happen. It saddens me a bit, um, but at the same time, I love America. <laughs> In cases like this, where a language is imminently threatened, Daniel will work with speakers to create a written record. <laughs> Darfurian immigrant Ahmad Nur comes in regularly to help Daniel transcribe his tribal language, Zagawa. Zagawa is just one tribe, probably the, uh, one of the biggest tribes in Darfur, uh, but certainly not all people speak it, not even all of the Zagawa speak it. Many of the languages that we do work with, uh, they have no okay. language learning materials, no textbooks, um, no lessons, nothing of the sort, no dictionaries. Uh, and so anything we do here in New York can hopefully be exported back to the This is like hop, you know, like nobody can take it away from you, nobody can touch it. And this is like our culture, our <laughs> custom. The Endangered Language Alliance estimates there are over 800 languages spoken around the New York area and that of those, almost half are considered endangered, meaning there's an imminent threat that they will die out. They must recruit volunteers to help them comb the city's neighborhoods, searching for speakers before it's too late. New York is home to hundreds of different cultures and language communities. And in many of these cases, the languages aren't just being lost here in New York City, they're also being lost back in the home country. So what it takes really uh, is a community-based effort uh, and finding out in that way uh, what types of languages uh, are spoken here and by how many people. Every time we lose a language, we really lose a part of the sum of human knowledge, adaptation, and co-evolution. This is good. Do you want to take it from here? The push to identify and protect dying cultures has ignited a spark in a city that prides itself on diversity. There is a larger than expected turnout, among them many endangered language speakers themselves. My wife and I actually expecting a uh, 
our first baby, and I can assure you that we'll make sure that the baby speaks Shugnani. <laughs> I'm very pleased. It is a bit bigger than I thought. Uh, many people came who I never heard of before, speakers of uh, all kinds of amazing languages, and uh, the momentum is building. Katie Wormsley, CNN, New York. And save those languages!